What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the introduction to the latest video series we'll be working on covering some of a company that's been all over AI news lately called DeepMind. Uh, the most recent kind of breakthrough DeepMind has put forward is alpha fold and protein folding. Um, but this basically is a company that is exploring reinforcement learning and applying it to all kinds of different environments. Um, they've, in the past few years, done some pretty breakthrough, made some pretty significant breakthroughs, such as beating the top players in, ga in board games like chess and Go. Um, specifically, these are the types of use cases we'll be exploring to try to get a better understanding of what exactly DeepMind is doing. Uh, so this is a company I've been super interested in and uh, the work they've been doing that I think applies to so many different problems in the real world, uh, whereas these board games are just toy examples and have helped uh, kind of move us forward in AI and in, in tackling some real world problems. But we'll, we'll try to understand these reinforcement learning algorithms. Um, specifically, they've been using uh, very deep neural networks, large convolutional resnets specifically, and in assistance with Monte Carlo tree searching. So the two of those things together have been enough to master games uh, such as chess and go, like I said, and actually beat uh, the world's best players. I think their current algorithms are far, far better than any human could ever come close to. Uh, there's actually a famous documentary out from DeepMind, uh, I suggest you watch if you haven't seen it already, where they put uh, their go playing algorithm against the one of the top players in the world, Lee Sedol, uh, and I think, I believe the algorithm actually beat him four to one. And, and since then, the algorithm has improved significantly. Uh, what's cool about DeepMind is they, they're very open about how the development of these algorithms work. So I have open here a paper that they've released and it goes in, in super deep detail on every little method that they use to put this together. So I've read through this and I've, uh, have some ideas on how we can kind of explore these ideas and break it down to a, a very simple level. Um, so each little part of this series will be a different, a different piece of this algorithm and how it all stitches together to ultimately build uh, the reinforcement learning algorithm in the end. Uh, there is a, a com computation limitation, obviously. We're not going to have the same resources available to us as a company like DeepMind. So I believe when they trained their AlphaGo algorithm, they had something like 5,000 uh, TPUs running for days and days to actually you know, simulate those millions of games. It was something over like 40 million simulated games that they used to actually train their algorithm. Um, so what we're going to do instead, instead of looking at a game that is uh, as complex as Go or chess, we're going to dumb it down a little bit and take a look at Connect4, which, you know, it's a six by seven board, so it, it seems like a very simple game. Uh, you know, 42 spaces in total in the board can be covered by one of two different pieces, you know, from player one or player two. And, uh, but even that, even so, you, you cannot possibly iterate through this entire game. So I believe there, there's something like 4.5 trillion different, uh, different orientations of the Connect4 board. So something like, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of different uh, optimizations that can be made when you're searching that search space, but, but even so, it's, it's still such a large search space that you, you couldn't possibly cover it with an iterative model. So this is really a problem where deep learning thrives. Um, in, in problems where we have this complicated, very well-defined search space and a very well-defined set of actions, in this case playing in one of seven different columns. So we're going to see if we can use those deep neural net networks to help us uh, basically train a, a large neural network, see if we can predict the next best move from any given state of the board. Uh, now where the Monte Carlo tree search comes into play, if you read through this you'll, you'll see a bit further how this works, but basically the Monte Carlo tree search helps us build our training data. We want to simulate a bunch of games, but we don't want to simulate them randomly. We want to simulate them in some sort of way that makes sense, and we want that those simulations to get better and better as our algorithm improves. So the Monte Carlo tree searching basically allows us to simulate each move multiple times using the deep neural network that we're training and actually select the move that gets predicted most often by that neural network. So we'll, we'll get into the details for, further, but the basic idea for now is that as the neural network gets better, uh, the tree searching becomes more efficient, which makes the neural network even better, and it's kind of a, a cycle that keeps looping, and you can continue training 
for uh, you know thousands or, or maybe millions of simulations, and and eventually your neural network will get very good at predicting that next action. So to give a bit of an intro to the rest of the series and get an idea of what we'll be working on here, I've I've done a test run of some of these ideas and I've had an algorithm or a model training for a couple days now, and we'll just we'll just play a couple games against that and see how the model does. So I have here on the left side, this is uh, some pi game code written up to just basically represent a NumPy array or our Connect4 board in a more uh, visually pleasing way. But you can see the game actually happening within uh, the NumPy array on the, on the right in the console here. So I'm, in, I'm playing in blue here, the model's playing in orange, and we'll just see how this game goes. So an interesting thing about training a model to play a game like Connect 4 is that you'll find that it plays very well in some situations. Like you'll think it did some, it, it decided some sort of very smart strategy to force you into a loss somewhere. Um, but then you'll run into other situations where it just completely misses a win or, or vice versa. It completely gives you a win uh, and it makes a mistake that a human um, would never make. So I think, yeah, there's, over the course of the training, I think it kind of goes through different evolutions of, of how it's thinking about the game. Um, and you see there, it actually, I, I was talking, so I wasn't, wasn't th completely thinking through my moves there, but it, was, it actually forced itself into a win by playing that diagonal and uh, forcing me to block it, giving itself room for another win there. So let's try one more game. Uh, that was actually quite a, a good move by the model that I wasn't expecting. And it's my turn to start. Let's see if it figures out to block me here, and it does. In playing this model previously, I found sometimes it doesn't notice these diagonal wins uh, in all cases, and, and it won't actually play that blocking piece. And this one might come down to a draw, we'll see. I don't believe any, either of us have a win to be made here. Well, I guess I did have one there, but uh, the timing didn't work out properly. So yeah, you see we ended up in a cat game here, or a draw. Um, so obviously the model is, it's definitely playing well. I mean, it's blocking, it's blocking my wins and, and it's been taking wins when they're available. Um, and I've seen some pretty clever setups for wins as well. So. Um, yeah, we'll see how continued training of this model actually goes, and in the rest of the series, we'll, I'll go through all the code and basically be breaking down this very, what appears to be a very complicated uh, methods paper, and try to break that down into, into small pieces that are digestible and actually make sense and see if we can stitch those all together into uh, the development of this model by the end of the series. In the next video, we will be putting together a Connect4 game environment in Python. So what that will involve is just a game class that will, and, and some functions that will allow us to actually place pieces on a board. The board is actually just a NumPy array with uh, negative ones, zeros, and ones for opponents' pieces, player pieces, and empty spaces. So that will be our representation of the board, and we'll be developing uh, all, all sorts of functions that will allow us to you know, easily place a piece and evaluate wins and everything that would be necessary to actually simulate a game or, or play a game at Connect4 in Python code. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.